Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And as we offer up to you the sacrifice is of thanksgiving as we offer up to you the sacrifice is of praise we bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And as we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving, as we offer up to you the sacrifice. God, we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Say, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. For him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. So we bring, we bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And as we offer, offer. Sacrifices of thanksgiving as we offer up to you the sacrifices of praise. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on and bless him in the sanctuary. Come on and lift up your voice and give the Lord a praise. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us enter in his gates with thanksgiving. Let us enter in his gates with praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on and just praise the Lord one more time. Come on and give him a praise in his courts. Come on and give him a praise in his sanctuary. Come on and just magnify when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done, all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are we doing? We're setting the atmosphere. I just need my atmosphere setters just to say hallelujah. Hallelujah! For when the praises go up, 
the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Rain down your blessings. Rain down your anointing. Rain down your healing. Rain down your protection. Come on and give the God a praise. Praise him for your life. Praise him for your health. Praise him for your portion of strength. Come on and praise ye the Lord. He is good. Somebody touching the hem of his garment. He is good. He is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let the household of faith say praise the Lord. Let Christian ministries say praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. How did you feel when you came out the wilderness? Hallelujah. Did you feel like praising? Did you feel like running? Did you feel like shouting? Hallelujah. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. It's good to be back in the household of faith. It's good to see all of your lovely faces that are here on today. Uh, give God a praise for Sister Cora being back. Shanda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. I say, ain't God good? Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Give God a praise for Brother Dave being back. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. Amen. Don't we love him? Don't we love him? Hallelujah. Thank God for my good friend, Frankie D. Harrington, Minister Frankie D. Hallelujah. All the way from Dallas, Texas. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank God for Pastor Duck. Hallelujah. Thank God for my lovely wife, Sister Louise. Amen. Hallelujah. Our media team, our ushers. Amen. Our drummers. Amen. Our, our music uh, ministry. Uh, what, what's your name, Monique? All right, come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank God for our new president. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. My God. My man, I feel like shouting. Hey, hey I feel like dancing. I feel like giving God some glory. Come on and give him a praise. Come on and just magnify him with me. Come on, come on, lift up your head, all ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Hallelujah, the king of glory is here. The king of glory is here. The king of glory is here. We ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hey, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God, y'all remember them good old shouting services we used to have? Uh, I feel like having one of them good old shouting services. Hey, them hand clapping, uh, that foot stomping. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. I said God is good. Y'all don't forget y'all shout now. Uh, don't forget your dance now. Amen. Oh, 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 oh. y'all done went flat on me. Hallelujah, by God. So we, we want to go before the Lord in prayer. We certainly do want to remember men and women and children everywhere and remember our country, remember all those that are before us, remember our families, amen, our children and our loved ones. The enemy is attacking, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We got to go into spiritual warfare. Put on the whole armor of God so that we can be able to stand, amen, against the wiles of the devil. So we're going to go back into our fasting and our prayer, amen, so we can pray and fast and seek the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Get ourselves together, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We ain't, we ain't shook by the devil, but the enemy trying to shake us, amen. Hallelujah. But we, we have gripped that solid rock. And what's his name? What's his name? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. 
Hallelujah. How many of y'all in love with Jesus? Yeah, hallelujah. I know y'all in love with him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Man, I feel like preaching. Thank you, Jesus. We got a preacher up here. Thank you, Jesus. My God, it's just good. It's just good to be here, ain't it? I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank God for Sunday school. I got to move on with the prayer service, but I'm so excited. Thank you, Lord. We got to have a good Sunday school. Good ch children came out. Teachers came out. People came out. Amen. Hallelujah. They learning some stuff. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy too much. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'm happy. So let us pray for our church. Let us pray for our Sunday school. Let us pray for the vision uh, of Christian ministries that all things come together uh, the way they should come. Let us pray for even our new location. Um, we're in the pr process and in the midst of getting the building together, getting the workers down there that need to be uh, got. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Need to be got. <laughs> and let us pray that, you know, we're going to be putting out a plan so we can uh, pack up here. Thank you, Lord, and get ourselves together because in the in end of Je uh, December, we want to be over there. Uh, so we're going to be getting ourselves together, packing up here. We had uh, a great couple, um, uh, a pastor come by in his congregation, and they uh, looked at the sanctuary, looked at the, the church. Uh, pray that the Lord touch their mind. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Some African brothers, and they, they have services in three different languages. I'm like, man, I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank you, just pick a language that I know. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And, and they were sincere and, and looked, looked like they were um, uh, uh, worshipers of the Lord. Amen. So let us pray that the will of God be continued to be made manifest in our lives. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Um, uh, any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Remember Sister Priscilla? Yes, yes, she had her operations. I believe she had them, or she getting ready to have them. Thank you, Lord, her operations um, on her heart. Um, uh, Sister Yolanda has said she stopped by the house and saw her as she was outside, and she looked good. She was encouraged. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So let us continue to pray. Let us continue to pray. And those that have contact with her, continue to reach out. Amen. And encourage our heart. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sister Yolanda. Amen. Yes. So we want to remember Sister Shirley Johnson. And we will uh, pray for her and uh, Sister Hall's uh, boys, that the Lord will bless them. Uh, Deacon Fields. Oh, glory. Seventy million. That's a lot of people, Doc. <laughs> Amen. What about... Yes. <laughs> yes. Trusting in the Lord. Amen. Oh, yes. Pray, pray for Bishop Pfeiffer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, 
Yes. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Amen. 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 All right. We want to have the church to stand. Saints, don't stop praying. For the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. <clears throat> For the Lord has promised. And, and his, his word, word is true. true. Yes. Just, Just keep, keep on, on praying. praying. Yes. He'll answer you. Saints, don't stop praying. For the Lord is nigh. Saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. He'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised. The Lord has promised. And his word is true. Oh, yes. Just, Just keep, keep on praying. praying. He'll yeah. One more time. You. Saints, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying, saints. For the Lord is nigh. He's nigh thee, even saints, in your don't mouth. Stop Praying, yeah, he'll hear your cry. For the Lord has promised, the Lord has promised, and his word is true. His word is true. Just keep on praying, just keep on praying. He'll answer you. Let every heart pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus. As we come before you, Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We say thank you, Lord, because you woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. You put clothes on our back and food on our table. We thank you, Lord, for provision. We thank you, Lord, for supervision. We thank you, Lord, for how you made ways where it seemed to be no way. Lord, we thank you for your encouragement. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, you are our very present help. In the time of trouble, in the time of need, we thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to look on each and every request that's been made known to you, Lord. We ask you to move by your grace and move by your power. Move through your anointing in the name of Jesus. That you bless each and every request that's been made known. That you make ways where it seemed to be no way. That you heal our bodies and deliver us, Lord, from the ends of the enemy. That you bless our children, bless our families, bless our finances, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, look upon our service on today. Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, you perform your miracles. You perform your wonders for acts. You perform, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let every yoke be destroyed. Pull down every stronghold. As we put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand. We ask you, Lord, that you strengthen our hearts, strengthen our minds and our spirit. Lord, bless us to be with one accord in the name of Jesus. 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 In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Come on and give the Lord a praise. As you remain standing, we're going to have Pastor Eloise Duck come and give us our scripture reading. And she'll turn it back over into the hands of our worship leader. Amen. Sister Monique Daniels. from the 34th division of Psalms. Psalm 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me 
and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Amen, amen. There's a new song out that says, If I lost everything and didn't have anything, and, and, and you were the only thing, I'd still have everything. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's praise and worship time in the sanctuary. Amen? Amen? We come to lift up the name of the Lord because he is good. He's worthy to be praised. His train fills the temple. He's never lost the battle. Amen? Can we boast on our God today? Amen? Amen. You're worthy, Father. You're good. And we bless you today, Jesus. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reign. Our God reign. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. Say, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. With power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Yes, you do, Lord. With power. Power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, say, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. Doesn't he reign today? Say, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Above every name, with power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Yes, you do, Lord. With power, power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Oh, say, my God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Say, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Say, over, over my circumstance, you've given me another chance. You reign. You reign today. Say, over, over my circumstance. You've given me another chance. You reign. Yeah, I say over, over, over my circumstance. You've given me another chance. You reign. You reign. You reign. Yes, you do, Lord. So you reign. So good. You're good, oh so good. You're good, oh so good. You're good, oh so good. You reign, yes you reign. You reign, yes you reign. You reign, yes 
you reign. Yes, you reign. And you're good, oh so good. You're good, oh so good. You're good, oh so good. And you reign, yes, you reign. 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 With power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Yes, you do, Lord, with power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. You reign. Father. Thank you for reigning, Father. Thank you for being sovereign. Thank you for being all-knowing, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We don't count it lightly, Father, that you reign on the throne, Father, and we bless you today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And you thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yes, you did. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free, so I could be whole, and I would tell everyone I know, you thought I was worth saving, yeah, so you came, so you came and changed my life, you thought I was worth keeping, Yes, you did. So you clean, so you, you clean me up, and you died. thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your, so I could be free and I could be whole. Yeah, I will tell everyone I know. We say. So you 
So you sacrificed your so I could be, so I could be free. God bless you. Come on and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. We want to be free. And whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Amen. We certainly do thank God for the, this part of the service. We thank God for the praise and the worship. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You put praise and worship into a service. The blessings come out of the service. Amen. Hallelujah. So we want to always have the mindset to praise the Lord. We always want to have the mindset to worship the Lord and to give him glory, honor, and praise. Amen? Hallelujah. Am I right? Thank you, Lord. We certainly do uh, thank God for our praise and worship team. Thank you, Jesus, to help usher us into the presence of the Lord. And it's up to us, thank you, Lord, to give God glory, honor, and praise and to worship him with them. Am I right? Hallelujah. Am I right? Amen. 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 Come on, just give the Lord one more praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So as we get ready to change the order of our service, as we begin to move forward in our service, um, just by way of announcements, thank you, Lord. We're um, entering into... Um, Wednesday Bible studies, and um, uh, we have some handouts uh, because we've been doing those quizzes. Uh, where are those handouts? Amen. I uh, want you to give them to our ushers, and um, I have uh, what I'm calling some, what's the name of, what's the top of that, what's it called? Ah, the top, what does the top say? There it is, the study guide. Amen, the study guide. We have uh, study guides. We've been taking quizzes uh, for our Bible study, and I have the study guide uh, for this week's quiz. And we want you to give them, go ahead, give them to the adults so that they can prepare themselves um, the, for the Wednesday quiz that's going on. We've been talking about vision. Amen. The Bible says, without a vision, the people what? Perish. Amen. And that word perish means they live without restraint. They live without a covering. They have no focus on their lives. And the Lord gives you focus. And um, the Lord wants us to get vision in our hearts and our minds. And that's why we've been studying and we've been uh, going over this. And we're going to have a quiz on these in this information amen and the vision of our church is that uh, we'd be a caring fellowship leading souls to Christ strengthening members and families making disciples equipping them for service and community ministry and our goal is our purpose is to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ to be uh, through effective responsible ministry and, and, and intentional, dynamic, creative fellowship. Thank you, Lord. And we want to get vision in our hearts, get vision in our minds so that we can be able to attain. The reason why a lot of people don't attain to the things that they have started out to do, they get off track. They lose focus off of the vision. The vision brings you back to focus. The vision brings you back on track, and that's where the blessing is. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's what we're teaching about. So you have the handout, and I want you to, to be able to study that information so that you can attain it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. We found out that um, <clears throat> the Scripture tells us that wise men will learn and increase what? Yes, but fools... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Despise knowledge. Amen. They despise it. They hate it. So y'all don't hate knowledge, do y'all? No, no, no. Y'all don't hate it, do y'all? Well, some of you do sound like. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We shouldn't hate it. Uh, wise men will hear and increase their learning, but fools despise knowledge. 
Amen. You don't want to despise it. You want to learn. Amen. When the scripture says study to show yourself approved unto God, you got to put in the work. Amen. You just don't, you ain't going to get this just by, you know, attending church and, you know, osmosis, you know, uh, or read, uh, have your, your, your Bible app open and uh, listening to it. You got to put the work in. You got to read it, don't you? That's how you obtain the knowledge. You got to read it. Amen. And then you got to read to obtain the understanding. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then the Bible says you got to receive it. You got to receive it. And when you receive it, that's when you apply it. Amen. Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. So I'm trying to fulfill my bishopric, be apt to teach. <laughs> so I'm teaching right now. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God. Give God a praise for our Bible study and our Bible students. Hallelujah. We're a school of higher learning. Amen. And as then we're going to get ready now to move in to our offering portion of the service. Amen. The Bible says, uh, First Lady. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to Miss Rain. Today, her birthday. Amen. Come on. Give God a praise for her. Amen. She had a birthday party yesterday. Sister Michelle's birthday was November 2nd. Amen. Give God a praise. Amen. Thank God. All right. Woo, got a lot of November babies. November 3rd, Maurice. Amen. Amen. Cherie's birthday coming up. Amen. Who else had a birthday? All right. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all doing good. Amen. November, a good month. All right. Sisterhood meeting this Friday at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock on the dot. Thank you, Lord. All right. Yes, we want to uh, take of two offerings. Uh, one to uh, bless our brother and uh, one for the church. We're going to take the first offering for the church. And then I'll have you come around. And bless our brother. Now, the brother told me, he said, Pastor Quinn, don't take no offering from me. I'll be, I'm good, you know, but that ain't right. Amen. We got to bless the man of God. Amen. He's going to bring forth the word of God. So, but this first offering, we don't, so we don't get confused. Amen. Um, Deacon Fields will be going around to collect for a church. All right. And then after he's finished, uh, Brother Dave, he'll go around and take the offering for the speaker. All right? Amen. Um, let the church, let us stand. We don't want to get out of that habit either. Um, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this ability to give, to sow seed into the kingdom. We ask you, Lord, that you bless us 30, 60, and 100 fold. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you hold on for a minute, Brother Dave. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 What's the highest praising? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, sing hallelujah. Come on and Brother sing Dave, this. you sing can go behind him. Hallelujah. Come on and bless your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. What's the highest praising? Hallelujah. Come on and sing hallelujah. Hold on, Brother Dave. Brother Dave, he ain't got over there yet. Wait for him to get over there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on and sing hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless 
the Lord with me. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless, bless the, the Lord with me. me. Come on and bless the Come Lord. Come on and bless the Lord All right, with Brother me. Dave. What's the highest praising? Hallelujah. Come on and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's the highest praising? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, come on, and we sing. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Clap your hands if you love him. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. I really love him. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Do you dance if you love him? Do you dance if you love Jesus? I really love him. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. Clap your hands if you love Jesus. I really love him. I really love my Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. So right now, thank you, Lord, before we bring up our speaker of the hour, I just want to give, uh, take the mic over to Sister Cora. Amen. I know that uh, she had been going through some things in her body, and uh, I believe that the Lord has done some great things to her. Uh, and through it, I just want her just to testify of the goodness of the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. The Lord. Excuse my seat. Um, I had just, you know, had been off from work like everyone else during the pandemic for seven months. And then I had went back to work and I was working, you know, for like a month. But then, you know, I have sciatic problems. So I was doing all fine. I had already put down 15 cases, and then I picked up this one case of water, and I went right, and my sciatic nerve went left. And it, stir it, it shot all the way up to the middle of my back, all the way down my right side, and turned my right foot in. And um, it was a pain that, like, none know other. But if you know about sciatic pains, you know that's really painful. So I laid up for... Um, like almost two weeks straight on my back because I couldn't move or anything like I had to stay off the nerve. But all through that process that I was going through, I still continued to rely on the Lord. I knew I had to be down because sometimes God will put you down for a reason. And you have to understand that reason through prayer and, um, and, and just prayer, you know, and just waiting to hear what it is. Because he don't always answer you when you think you have the answer. Oh, was that from God? It might have been just from yourself. But as I laid there, I continued to pray and worship on the Lord. Even though when I went back to work, I was dragging my whole right side. Because I couldn't go on workman's comp because I just got off of being off for seven months. And I couldn't just rely on the fact that I just had to lay here. And I laid there and laid there, and God was like, you got to get up. You know, you got to get up, you know. So once I had got up and, you know, the pain was still there, and I shot back and forth, back and forth, you know, I pressed on. I pressed on, and I was like, Lord, I'm missing church. I'm missing the sanctuary. I'm missing the saints. But I reach out, you know, and the saints reach out to me. And I felt the prayers of the saints because it's a feeling that you just don't know of, you know. When you feel someone praying on you and you feel the relief come up, just don't think that that's okay, the pain is going. That's the prayers of the saints praying that thing away, you know. So it is still here, you know, and I don't stand up as often, and I lay down a lot, but, you know, I still press on. So I was so happy when the Lord woke me up and was like, it's time. It's time to go back into the sanctuary. So I dragged and I dragged and I dragged all morning just to get here to be amongst the saints. So keep praying for me that I go stronger in the Lord and in his will and be able to do what he is asking of me in these last and evil days. I want to give the Lord a praise. Amen. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and our testimonies. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Speak life to your situation. Amen. Hallelujah, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And we certainly do thank God, thank God for uh, what he's doing in her life, and we thank God for what he's doing in all of your lives. Uh, truly, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. And we thank God uh, once again as we get ready to introduce our speaker uh, of the hour. I thank God for what the Lord has done for him in his life. 
And um, I truly remember when he had came into the church because the Lord had blessed me and my wife to come into the church probably about a month before he did. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord had me. Uh, I was down uh, in the hood. And the uh, Lord said, invite him to church. And I looked at him. I said, Lord, not him. Because <laughs> that brother was looking rough. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, I was scared. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And, and there was a convention going on. And I'm sitting up there praising God, rejoicing in the Holy Ghost. And I look over. And who do I see? My brother sitting right there. Uh, I felt that big. All my anointing left. <laughs> I said, Lord have mercy. Thank God uh, we got brothers like uh, O.B. Bryant, Oliver Bryant. Thank you, Lord. And that brother, he'll witness to a lion. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Tell him you need to get saved. And if the lion were to roar, he'd roll liar, higher. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, and the brother Frankie D came into the church. And at that particular time, my wife, she was, she was on a sabbatical because she had just had the twins. And it was there. Um, he had came and my car had broke down in front of the house. And uh, Frankie D came over to help me fix my car. And I was in the house. I said, come here, honey. Come here. This is the new brother. And she peeked out the window and she said, him? <laughs> I said, yeah, that's him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Sweetly saved, the Lord filled him with the Holy Ghost. And we see, you know, God, we look on the outward appearance, but God looks on the inward appearance. Amen. I'm so glad God looked beyond all of our faults. And he said, I'm so glad it ain't up to man to save me. Hallelujah, it's up to God. Amen? Hallelujah. So we've been friends down through the years. I can tell you countless of stories, and he can tell you countless of stories, but that's not what we're here for. Amen? But we're here to hear the word of the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So without further ado, I want to introduce to some and to present to others Frankie, Minister Frankie, did we even share the same name? Amen. Minister Frankie D. Arrington, let the church stand. Receive him with a hearty amen. Every time, every, every time Pastor Quinn tells that story, it brings tears to my eyes because I love him dearly. And the Lord knows I see his hip go past. Beyond just being brothers, he means a lot to me. He means a lot to me. I thank God for him. I remember one time they gave me a birthday party. And, uh, you know, it was very emotional because where I came from, you don't get birthday parties. And it, it caught me by surprise. And uh, they said, uh, Elder Wallace was there. He said, yeah, we're going to give Brother Frankie D a birthday party. And another little guy over there named Frank, too. And he, I think it was uh, Sister uh, Andrea. Now, I'm God brother, stepbrother, one of the children that her mother had adopted. His birthday was the same day mine. And it caught me by surprise, and I start crying. Brought tears to my eyes. And, Fred, and Brother Fred said, oh, brother, it'll be all right. You know, saying, don't cry. Frank said, no, no, let him cry. Let him cry. <laughs> You know, I guess he thought, well, a guy like me crying, he'll see some. You know, I've never been a tough guy, but I have never been a scared guy either. You know, when you're in the world, the world beats you up so bad, you don't even know how bad you look. You don't know how bad you really look. You think you all right. But you're in a wreck. You're in bad shape. And it's only the goodness of God that brings joy and newness to your life and your appearance and your walk because if you don't have the grace of God, you don't have the love of God and you don't have the favor of God, you're not going to make it in this time. You're not going to make it in this time. I was just in uh, Brother Phil, Deacon Phil told me, he said, Brother, I didn't know you wasn't even a deacon no more. I said, well, to me, you know, 
I'm at the church. I'm the deacon. I'm the minister. I'm the janitor. I'm the I'm whatever I need to be at the church. The title don't mean nothing to me. As long as I'm getting a chance to work in the house of God and give God something back to his people that he has given me. And I thank God for just giving me a mind because every time the bishop asked something, he said, brother, I need you to do so-and-so, so-and-so. And I never back down. I never back down because the Lord have done so much for me. If I'm serious, when I was in the world, I was so bad. I really was bad, though. I was bad enough to be a set of twins. I'm serious. That's how, my, that's how bad my mother looked at me. Because when I got saved, my, even my mother said, I wish I would knew that you would have turned out the way you were. I would put everything in, in your name in charge of the family. But that's how bad I was because she didn't think I was going to amount to nothing. But until God saved me, then she seen the great change that God done in me. Now, you know when your mother can see that, the world definitely can see it. And I just thank God. I just, you know, like I said, Pastor Quinn mean much. He just don't know his friendship to me is great. I appreciate it. I don't take our friendship light. I don't take the, the love of the saints light. If I know you and I met you, I love you. No, I might not give you my last dollar because I might need it for something else. <laughs> but it's in my love for you. I will try to help you all I can. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I just thank God, you know, Brother Deacon Field, he's a true brother to me. When I got here, this brother wanted to put me up in the Sherrington or the Hampton Inn out there on the Bayfront. I'm like, why would I want to stay there? I said, brother, I can stay right here. He said, yeah, but my room back there ain't clean. And I said, brother, I didn't come to judge your house. I come to spend time with my brother. Your house means nothing to me. I sleep on the floor. I just want to be with the saints of God. I, want, I can stay in a hotel myself. I can stay anywhere. But I just thank God for the saints of God. It means a lot, people. It means a lot. To be in the body of Christ and have brothers and sisters that you can depend on. That true love is shown towards you. I'm not going to keep you long. I'm not going to bore your patience with this on and on conversation about me. And Sister Nikki asked me, he said, how long you been in the ministry? I said, about four years. It's not something to go blow a trumpet about. You know. Ah, I'm a preacher now. I'm a preacher. Okay. But if you're living a regular life, what, preach, what is your preaching? You know, everybody, anytime you see a person out there on some world, whatever they're talking about, they're ministering. Was it true? Or was it a lie? They're ministering. They're giving you your, their version of what they believe life should be like. Mother White told me when I first became, a, before I was a ministry, she asked me, said, Brother Harrington, when you preach your first sermon, I want you to preach about the, uh, God's anointing. I'm like, okay. So it was like a couple of years, and the pastor came to me, and he said, I want you to teach a class. It was around Christmas time. He said, I want you to teach a class, Brother Harrington. He can answer whatever you want to call me. You can call me Frankie D. It doesn't make any difference. I said, yeah, I'll teach it. He said, what you want me to teach? He said, I want you to teach on the anointing of God. I'm like, okay. So I go home and study. Can't find anything to study. Can't find nothing to, you know, it's there, but I can't find it. So I go to sleep, and I start dreaming about the anointing. Yeah. I wake up. I said, my God, this is what the pastor wants me to teach on. I go back to sleep. The dream started right there where I woke up at. It's about the anointing again. I wakes up again. I said, my goodness, what is this? And the third time I went to sleep, the dream starts right back where I woke up at. And I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Yeah. And I thank God from that day forward, the Lord was calling me into the ministry. Yes, Lord. 
and he has blessed me. And he has blessed the blessing of the Lord is so wonderful in my life. I can just go on and tell you stories, countless stories, but that's not what I'm here today for. I'm here to bring forth the word yes, of God. And I will just, you know, I'm not a hacker. I'm not a moaner. I'm just a talker. I, just, I can talk now. I can go on now. I can speak. You don't worry about that. Now, something to say, I can say it. <laughs> But I want to talk to you today on the subject, what kind of faith we have today. Look in. Look in it. What kind of faith we have today? What kind of faith I have today in the word of God? What kind of faith we have today? Everything is going on us around us. We had just had that president election and it's you voted Tuesday, and they decided the president Saturday. I never heard of it. Never heard of something like that. And let you know, you better have some faith today. And you better check your faith and see if it's the right faith. You got a pandemic in the land. Everybody says, well, I'm saved. That ain't, that ain't stopping the coronavirus. You better have faith in God. So if you catch the coronavirus and you leave here, because the scriptures say in Hebrew 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that who comes unto God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Your faith have to be where you're seeking God. Amen. Your faith has to be at a notch and a level that what God is pleased with. Yeah. Because if your faith is not pleasing God, then you're not where you need to be in God. I got four things to talk about in faith. I call it the big four yeah. of faith. The big four. And these are some of the ingredients that we take and say, this is faith. This is what I got out of faith. Because if I ask church today, if I walked and asked each and every one of you, I guarantee you, out of five of you, first thing you're going to say, if I say, what is faith? You're going to take me to Hebrew 11 and 1. Someone has said it already. Faith is the such of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. True. True true. But what is that? What is the faith? What is the evidence? What is the hope? What is the substance? A lady can make a cake and she says it's a pound cake. Oh, you go tell everybody, oh, she made a pound cake. If they ask you, what was in the pound cake? I don't know. All I know, it was good. But does that cake have ingredients in it to make pound cake? Yeah. Same ingredient to make a pound cake can make a, a strawberry shortcake. It's different ingredients. Yeah. The reason why I know this is because my wife is a baker. And one time I was weighing 260 some pounds from eating cookies and cakes. <laughs> and I was like, so that sister said, no, sister. You eat them. <laughs> and I, right now I'm down to 215 now because I turned the cakes away. <laughs> but it's the ingredients in faith that helps us to know what faith is all about. Faith itself, in order to have faith in God, we need strength. We need strength. Faith is, if you are, just like the subject said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. God is not looking for weak faith people. Your faith has to be strong in God. The scripture said we have to be strong in the power of God and in his might. We, strength, we need strength in order to do his will. 
Hebrews 10 and 5 says, Catch not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense rewards. Confidence is strength. The more confidence you have in God, the more strength you have in God. Because if you don't have no confidence in this man right here, you have no faith in him. He can stand out here and preach the word of God to sun of the sundown. If your confidence ain't in what he's saying, then you have no faith in him. His words have no strength to you. Faith. And that's one of the main ingredients of faith. is strength. You see a lot of people tell you, I got faith. And then you ask them later on, well, I don't know. About this, can God do this? Can God do that? I listen to the sister testimony. She has faith. She have confidence in God is gonna heal her. She have confidence God is gonna do something for her. You got to have confidence in God. If you don't have confidence in God, then you don't have no faith. You have no strength. If you have no strength, then she couldn't get up out of the bed. God said, "Get up, get up, get up," and she said. Finally, she got up. She drug around, but the strength and the confidence she had in the word of God telling her to get up. Amen. It means a lot to have strength. Yeah. It means a lot. The more strength, like I said, you have in God, the more confidence you have in his word. If you go through the Bible, Everyone God used in the Bible, sometimes they started off without strength, without confidence. But God, later on, if they kept walking with God, their confidence got stronger, their strength got stronger, their faith got in the stronger of what God will and can do. In Acts 8, 29 and 30, it said, then, then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. In verse 30, Philip ran. Ran. They said the scripture said he ran to do God's will. Why? Because he had confidence in God. He trusted God to do what God wanted him to do. He didn't walk. He was willing and ready to go and do the will of God. Because his confidence was high. His faith in God was high. Yeah. And he had strength to do it. Have some of us sometimes go, God will tell us to do something. You hear the pastor say, he said, go witness to that brother. He said, no, not him, Lord. <laughs> At the time, he was a young brother. Yeah. And I understand that. Sometimes when we're young in God, we can't do what the older ones do because they have been through something. They've seen God work. Yeah. Young people can't do that. That's why I was praising the young people in Sunday school because it's great that they are here in Sunday school because they're going to need strength in God. They're going to need that word. They're going to need confidence in God. And the only way they're going to get it is see you over the saints. Show them the faith you have in God. Paul wrote in one of the lessons, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. It takes strength to fight. It takes strength to fight. I'm telling you, it takes strength to fight because I used to be a fighter and a runner. <laughs> it takes strength to run too. <laughs> but, but I used to fight a lot. And without the strength, I couldn't be a fighter. Yeah. But God seen all that in me. I will, you could say something to me, and I, if I said something back, I'm really you ready to fight. Before I got saved, I told my kids, you're going to fight, fight. Don't sit there and argue with people. <laughs> Arguing just, you, you're wearing yourself out. <laughs> you're using all your strength going back and forth with people. If you're going to fight, fight. And my kids took that as a notion. I taught that. I taught that deep. Just like mama told you, if somebody hit you, pick up something, hit them back. You taught that. 
And my kids today, they'll tell you, well, Daddy, you remember what you said? And I try to tell them, I try to change the course of it. I said, well, no, don't fight now, you know. She just walk away. Because that's what I do now, I just walk away. I'm not going to argue with people. Even today, I'm not going to argue with you. If you get somewhere where you feel like we're going to be a conflict, you have it. It's yours. And it takes strength to do that too, yeah. to be able to walk away. Yeah. When you're walking with God, it's going to take much strength. But Paul said in this, I fought a good fight. I had strength to finish the course. He said, therefore, it's laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord will give me. That means he has the reward. That's why I said, cast not thy confidence away, but bring great rewards in God. Paul says it's a reward laid up for him. Righteousness, a crown of life. That's a reward. But let me tell you also, there's also a reward for not doing God's will. And it's called hell. Oh yes, you're going to be, you're going to be getting something out of it. So you either, as the old man told me one time, he said, you can use walking with the Lord just like you use your hands. You either get right with God or get left with the devil. There ain't no middle ground. And I took that, that I wanted to get right with God. <laughs> I definitely, you know, I just, I just, I don't like fire. I'm dark enough. <laughs> and I really don't like fire at all. So I want to get right with God. I want to be right with God. I want to walk with God. But strength is one of the number one ingredients. And God, you got to have strength to finish the course. You got to have strength to run the race. If you don't have strength, you're not going to finish your course. If you don't have strength, you're not going to run the race. How many people you know get up in the morning time? And Dick and Phil was speaking of some boxes, Muhammad Ali, Joe Fraser. Them guys have strength to get in that ring. Because I'm telling you, I'm not going to get in the ring. And they said, ding, you start fighting. No, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to try to catch you by surprise. <laughs> That's my fight. I'm going to try to get the upper hand quick if I'm going to fight. But it takes strength to fight. It takes strength to walk with God. It takes strength to live holy. Because I'm going to tell you, as you walk with God and live holy, the enemy's coming at you. And I'm going to tell you, the devil, kind of like I was, he tried to catch you by surprise off God yeah. while you're sitting there running your mouth back and forth your mama my dad and my sister your brother bam that's a fight if you like I told my kids you want to fight fight you know no need to argue about it but and one of the next ingredients of faith it said it's substance. Yeah. It's a substance in there. So we saying, okay, faith is the substance. What is the substance? What is the substance? Faith is strength. We know that. The substance to God is obedience. Yeah. That's the main, one of the main ingredients. If you don't obey God, you're not going to be, have no strength. You're not going to have the substance. Obedience is the substance that you must obtain in God. You have to obey God. You have to. The Bible tells us obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Now Saul killed all the animals. He had all the animals out there he was going to kill that he had got from the Amalekites. He was going to sacrifice unto God. He had the strength. He had went and fought. But he didn't have no obedience. Samuel walks up, saw him to make the, and he hears the yawning of the oxen and the bleeding of the sheep. He said, What is this I hear? What is this I hear? And Saul said, Oh, I say the fattest of the animals, the sacrifice unto our God. What? He said, did you do what God told you? Oh, yeah, I done what he told me. If you did it, then I want to hear this noise in the background. He 
He said, don't you know God wants obedience yes. more than he wants sacrifice? Yes. Your sacrifice that you make is great, but your obedience is better. The Bible says obedience is like witchcraft. Disobedience is like witchcraft. Yeah. Disobedience is as witchcraft. Yeah. When you don't obey God, you, God considers you as a witch. In so many means, I'm not saying you're a witch, but that's what the Bible says. It's considered to be as witchcraft. And what did the God say to the, in, the, in the Old Testament? Suffer not a witch to live. Kill him. Your disobedience can get you killed. Amen. That's what the children of Israel was about today. In the lesson, disobedience. Yeah. And you see what the anger of God told Moses. I'll wipe him out in a moment. Oh. In a moment. God do not want nobody coming to him that is not going to obey him. Oh. If you're not going to obey God, then stay where you at. Yeah. Bishop Tompkins told the saints one time, he said, if you listen, if you're not going to obey God, stay in the world and do your thing. Party. Because you come to God, you're not going to obey him, you're not going to get saved. You might as well do what you want to do out in the world. Enjoy yourself. Because that's a reward for you. And it's called hell. Remember, get right with God or get left with the devil. Disobedience it's worse. In Hebrews 11 and 5, it said, By faith, Enoch was translated yes. that he should not see death. He was not found because God had translated him, for there, before his translation, he had this testimony. What was it, Enoch? He said, I please God. How do you please God, Enid? I obeyed him. Yeah. I obeyed him. Jesus obeyed God. Jesus obeyed God that God said that he was called the faithful one. The faithful one. Abraham obeyed God. He was called the father of faith. Not because of his strength, because he obeyed. You have to obey. Everywhere you go in life is someone that's going to be over you. Well, I don't want to, I, I ain't going to do what these people tell me at the city of Dallas. Then, Frank, you need to get your little girls and hit that gate. Don't, don't look back. As the old lady looked up and seen the man on the tower, she kept looking up. And then one guy stood up. He was a farmer. He looked up to him. And the old ladies were looking up. And he did like this. And the old lady looked at the man and said, that is so great that you blessed them mans up there working on that construction, that tower. He said, no, I didn't bless him. He said, I said, hey, you, up there, come down, get your lunch, and hit that gate. <laughs> because they didn't want to obey. <laughs> he couldn't shout out because it was too far up. He got their attention long enough. You got to obey somebody. And that sent me is with, and he said, he that sent me is with me in, in St. John's. He said, he that with me sent me. The Father has not left me alone. For I do always those things that pleases him. And what is, the, what is that you did, Jesus? I obeyed God. There's nothing Jesus didn't do that he didn't obey. Jesus obeyed God in every access of life. With one disobedience Jesus was done, he couldn't be called the son of God. Obedience. It's better than sacrifices. Amen. I look to the pastor. Pray the Lord, pastor. Man, that guy make me sick. <laughs> Go, leave. Go find somebody that don't make you sick. It's good. It's good when you obey your pastor. 
But God, God knows if you obey the, that the leader that he put over you, then you're going to obey me. And I know what kind of leader y'all have. I know what kind of life he lived. I'm a little older than the elder Quinn, Bishop Quinn. And forgive me if I call him elder, but that, I've been calling him that. And me and him go back so far, sometimes I even call him by his first name. But you can call him by his first name too, Bishop. Or Pastor. But I, you know, we go back far enough that it doesn't offend one of us to call each other by our first names. And I thank God. But I know what kind of pastor you have. I know what kind of life he lived. He's one of the most humble brothers that I ever ran into in life. And me, him, and Ella Wallace all was friends. And we all have different ways about us. I told Bishop Quinn yesterday, I said, you have something me and Ella Wallace don't have much of. He said, what is that? I said, patience. <laughs> God is working with us. But in humbleness, Bishop Quinn is very humble. Very humble man. I'm humble, but I'm not as humble as he is. And that's, that's our styles in life, though. I got to come to that point, and God is bringing me to that point because I see myself not as aggressive as I used to be. But I, I recognize humbleness, and it's good that I can recognize that in him because I'd like Deacon Phil said, if he done it for him, he can do it for me. But obedience is very important in the word of God. And the number three ingredients is hope. 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 Yes. We hope for this. We hope for that. We, some of us even hope for Joe Biden to be president. Some of them hope for Trump to be president again. I just hope for the will of God to be done. <laughs> I just hope for the will of God to be done. Not only in my life, but in their lives too. That's my hope. And then the greeting in faith is hope, which means trust. Hope is trust. Remember, you don't, you're not going to obey nobody. You're not going to obey God. You're not going to trust him. Now your faith is weak again. You have no strength. You're not obedient. And you don't trust God. You have to trust because we go back and some of the old saints and some of, even some, some of the older people, if some things don't happen in life, we just didn't believe it was going to happen. Who knows when Obama became president? Did we know that we were going to have a black president when we was eight, nine years old? No. No, we didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't think so. Because even though I live in Dallas, I was born and raised in Mississippi. So you do the math. <laughs> Mississippi ain't finna vote for no black president. As long as I never lived, they've been Republican. But the trust, Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Hope in the Lord. With all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. When you start leaving to your own understanding, you don't have no trust in God. Because you're saying, God, your plan is not working. I'm going to do it like this. You have no faith. What kind of faith do you have? Or should we go back with the subject? What kind of faith do they have today? We have no faith when we can't trust God. We have no faith in God when we don't believe him. You know, who would know walking around a, a city seven days would bring a wall down? The people didn't know, but they trust. They were obedient, and they had strength enough to walk around the city. That seven days, what they did and completed what they supposed to have done, the wall fell. What was God doing? Building up their trust in him. Building up their confidence in him. 
So when I ask you to do the next thing, I ain't got to worry about you thinking, hmm, walking around this wall is going to make the... No. That's impossible. But when you trust in God, God can do things in your life that you never believed. Yeah. Who would ever think God would save me? Bravo. I had got so bad in, in life, I didn't trust nobody. I used to got so bad in life, and this is a true statement, I was selling crack. Yeah. I got so bad in life, I started giving myself credit. Yeah. That's how bad I had got. I would tell myself, give me something on credit, Frank. And I said, okay, you going to pay me? <laughs> Where is my trust? <laughs> no, I'm selling crack. I ain't finna pay nobody. I wasn't paying myself. No trust. But when I came in the church, God showed me the thing to show me that if I trust in him, he would do things for me. Yeah. And he have kept his word. No, he haven't gave me the millions and millions of dollars that I hoped for. But <laughs> he have kept me afloat. I never went hungry. I'm not homeless. I'm in my right mind. I know Jesus saved. The blood cleanses. I know all these things. I know when I go down on my knees who to call on. And ain't Von Seal Aaron to my mama. That didn't have no trust in me when she first seen me. I'm your baby. You don't even trust me. But I trust. We got to have trust. Yeah. And it's a trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. If you don't have the trust. In verse 6 it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. If you trust in the Lord, that's the only way he's going to direct your path. People tell you each and every day, ah, I'm trusting in the Lord. God is my life. Oh, yes, I'm blessed and highly favored. How are you going to be blessed and headed to hell? If you're not living for God, how are you blessed? And the rapture takes place and God brings the judgment and you're blessed by God, and God said, you go that way. Depart from me. You're not blessed. Now God reigns on the just and the unjust. But you're not blessed. But when they tell me that, you know what I say? Well, power to you. Keep right on going. Because if I stop and try to get in a conversation with them, it's an argument. How you going to tell me you ain't saved? How you going to tell me you ain't blessed? If I tell them about the life you're living, that's how I can tell. But I don't say nothing. I let people say what they want to say. Like I said, I don't get in an argument with people. So I'm not going to argue with you. If you want it, you can have it. It's yours. If you both look up in the sky, and we both know the, clock, the sky is clear, and you say it looks like rain, all right. If you stand right here, I'm going to get in the shelter. I'm not going to argue with you, but I trust in the Lord. With all my heart. And I'm leaning not to my own understanding. That's why I know the Lord is able to bring me to a more humble spirit. Right. More patient spirit. Because I'm trusting him. And I can tell you, without these things, I'm not going to do it without God. Without trust. Jeremiah 17 and 7 said, blessed is the man blessed. that hope. Now I'm using hope as trust. But it said, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. And who hope is in the Lord. They use both words. You got to trust in the Lord. And your hope got to be in the Lord. Yeah. Hope brings forth trust. How many of you ever celebrated Christmas and you hope to get that bike or that doll or that big present on Christmas morning? And your hope was high around December the 1st. As the year went, as the days go by, you keep looking under that tree and you don't see that present. Your hope kind of breaks down a little bit. Maybe I'm not going to get it. But you're trusting when the year first start off that you're going to get that big, that shiny new bike. Or you're going to get whatever you think you wanted. And, uh, but our hope shouldn't be like that in God. Our trust should not be like that in God. We should trust in God where if God bring that 
bike or whatever else we want in our life because God got better things than what you're asking for. Yeah. Lord, I want a new house. No, Lord, I want a house. Me and my wife was trusting the Lord that we get a house. Because we left Milwaukee, we had a house. I left Mississippi, I had my house. With the Milwaukee, the Lord gave me another house. Come to Texas, I'm renting. Rent in Texas is not cheap. If you want to live in certain places, my rent was almost $2,000 a month. My rent was almost $2,000 a month. But the Lord sustained me for three years. Don't mind talking. <laughs> Trust. My wife and I went out looking for houses. We went here looking for houses. We went there looking for houses. We went everywhere looking for houses. We went to houses. Every time we leave a house, we find something wrong with the house. That if we move in it, we got to fix. I'm telling them, well, I'm tired of looking at houses. And one day I was at work, and this guy is not living, he's not living saved, not one quarter. And he told me, he said, Frank, man, he said, man, I just built a brand new house. I said, what? And I'm over him. I'm making more money than he is. And I've been there longer than him. How you build a house? He said, man, I built a brand new house. I said, well, don't say. I didn't go into conversation with him. He said, yeah, man, get in touch with these people. So I went home and told my wife, I said, maybe the Lord is not trying to give us a house that's already built. Maybe he want to give us a new house. She said, well, Frank, I don't know. I don't know, Frank. I don't know. That's a lot. And she went through this program. She found it on the internet, and they were telling her, it'll be six to eight months before we get your credit right. Because we had, we had left Milwaukee, and it took a lot of money to get to Texas, and we spent a lot of money, and we got behind in some bills, so you know what that do for your credit score, don't you? Oh, yeah. And the credit score wasn't batting 500s and 600s and stuff like that. It was batting, but it wasn't batting that strong. And I said, I told her that. She went on, went on, went on. And I said, well, let's go over and check with the peoples. So we go over and talk to the lady, and we sit down. Thank God for President Trump. I know y'all kind of say, but he sent them stimulus checks out just in time. <laughs> and when, it, when he sent them stimulus check out, the people said, you got to have $3,000 just for us to do the paperwork in case everything don't go right. And we got $2,400, and we did have $600 in the bank. So we put with it, and we was able to pay to get in the program. She said, so she went in there and did some papers, she come back, you know, everybody's gonna tell you at first, you pre-qualified. So that's okay, that's good news, we pre-qualified. Two days later, they wrote us that we qualified. Qualified for a brand new house. Why? Because we trust in the Lord and lean not to our own understanding. All our ways, we acknowledge him. And my, that lady told my wife, said, go out and look at the houses that are being built and pick the house out you want. Yeah. And we'll build it to what you want to do. Yeah. This was in the middle of June. She started looking at this program the last of May. Yeah. We had moved in our house the first of September. Yeah. Brand new house. Yeah. As, as Pastor Quinn said, well, no man laid his head before. But this is because we trust in the Lord. We obey the Lord when the Lord said, get up and move to Texas. Take your little saving and do what you got to do to sustain yourself. We did what he said. The Lord opened up the door and did what he said he was going to do. It don't look good sometimes, but things, it's, it's going to get better. It said... It said in uh, Psalms 18 and, and 2, it said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverance, my God, my strength. In whom would I trust? If you're all that, Lord, to me, then I'm going to have to trust in you. My buckler, my horn of my salvation, and my high tower. The Lord is getting all this in you so you can trust him. If you just can obey God, you might not have the strength to run a 
a long ray. But if you just got the strength, like that sister say, and just drag along. But you're trusting in God. You're obeying because God said, get up, and she got up. She trusted in God when she got up, and God brought her to church today. Yeah. Trust go a long way with God. Trust go a long way with God. Trust go a long way with God. If you don't trust in the Lord, you're not going to move. You got to trust God. Sometimes it don't look good. Sometimes it don't look like it's going to pan out. But you got to trust. You got to be obedient. You got to have strength. When you trust God, God is going to do ain't nothing God wouldn't do for you. Because when God got your trust, you're going to do whatever God tell you to do. That's a two-way street. You trust God, God trusts you. Yeah. Brother told me one time, he said, you know why God don't give some people a lot of money? I said, no, why? He said, because he can't trust them. You give them too much, they'll leave the church. Yeah. Oh, I'm out of here, God. I got no money to live them on. Adios. God gives you enough to sustain you. But if you take that little and sow it back into God, God will give you much. Much. The more you give back to God, the more God keeps giving to you. Try to give God. Make it up in your mind. I'm going to give more than you, God. So I'm going to challenge you, God. Every time you give me something, I'm going to give it back. And that's what I offer. The offer goes to the church back. I don't want the offering. It goes back. Because I want to give back into God. And I believe I sow into this ministry, God will sow into mine. Much more. It's not that I, I don't trust God. I trust God. But I also have to obey God. Trust in him. It says, in the last ingredient, the last ingredient, the most, this is a very important ingredient in faith. It is the evidence. It is the evidence. If you don't have evidence, then you have nothing. You, so everybody want proof. Show me. Show me what it says. Show me what it does. Show me. Show me. Show me. Well, your evidence of things. And faith is the evidence of things not seen. Almost everything we do this day, we want evidence. I want evidence that my wife loved me. My wife wants evidence that I love her. I just can't go by and say, I love you, honey, and hit the door. When bills get ready to be paid, I still love you, honey. I'm going over here today. No, she wants evidence. Leave that check here. Pay the bill. Do what you need to do. Show me you love me. Buy me a pair of shoes every once in a while. <laughs> Buy me a dress. Take me out to dinner. You know, hold me. Tell me you, show me. Evidence. My brothers, is it, and the evidence this in this thing is patience. Yeah. If you don't have patience, you have no evidence. Because any time you ask God to do something, most of the time you got to wait. wait you got to wait on the Lord. Patience is very important in this role in faith because it is the evidence of things not seen. We as people look up and want evidence. My, it say, and James it said, my brothers, can it all joy when, you, when, you, when your faith, when you, when you when faith, when your faith fall, when you, when ye fall in divers temptation, thank you, Pastor. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at the word and it just say, okay, I'm not gonna come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Divers temptation, knowing this that your trying of your faith worketh patience. After you get strength, after you obey. And you trust, now you got to be tried. Make sure these things are in the right place. Make sure you got trust. Make sure you obey God. 
Make sure you got strength enough to finish the race. Now you got to wait because patience is coming. And I, and I say, most people say, oh, Lord, give me patience, give me patience, give me patience. Then that very person that you can't stand walks up to you and you ain't got three seconds of patience for them. I can't stand him. I, want him. I don't even want him around me. I don't even want him more around me. I, when he come, I just leave. You got to have patience. In my job, I have to have patience. And I'm telling you, in Texas, it's more Spanish people there. And them cats will get together and talk about you in Spanish in one of the worst ways. And some words in some body language, you can actually pick up what they're saying. I seen the guy talk about me, and I'm looking at this guy. Then he's coming to me, he came to me, Mr. Frank, is this all right if I go to lunch? I said, please do. Please do. Go to lunch. Matter of fact, take you like extra 10 minutes or something other, you know, because we wasn't doing nothing anyway. But my patience, I have to have patience dealing with these guys because they're looking for some reason to say that I'm discriminating against them. Or I don't care for them. But let patience, verse 4 in that same verse say, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may not be perfect, you that ye may be perfect in time wanting nothing. When you let patience work her way in you, you're wanting nothing because you know God is going to do what you ask him to do. And when God wants you to do something, God wants you to be a blessing to people. So I don't want you to call his wrath down on folks. Lord, kill them. No, oh, God, I don't want you to do that. God, bless them. Help me, Lord, to get along with them. The church was praying with me. It was a brother named Manuel, Manuel Tefola. And that guy gave me the troubles. And I took it to the church. I took it to the church. I said, Lord, I said, y'all pray that the Lord help me with this brother. They said, what is his name? I gave him a name and the sisters would pray, so we just pray, and brother, and they have noonday prayer, so I can, sometimes I, morning prayer, sometimes I get online, and say, bless Manuel Tafoli and Brother Aronson to get along together. And now Manuel Tafoli called me El Mano, which means brother in Spanish. He said, that's my El Mano. See how God worked that out? I'm no longer his enemy, but he called me his brother. El Mano means brother. You be around them long enough, you'll pick up some words. And I thank God for that. We get along now. But he's still slick. And that, but he's, not in, he's not in the church, so I accept that. Isaiah 40 and 31 said, but they, that, but they that wait up on the Lord shall renew their strength. You have to wait. You have to wait on the Lord. if You're going to get your strength renewed. You got to have patience to wait. I think they said in the song, right? Wait means patience. You have to wait. God is not going to do nothing because you, you're in dying stress. Oh, God, you know, wait. The song said, wait, 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 I say, upon the Lord, and he shall renew thy strength. If you got patience. And Luke, it said, Luke 21, 19, it said, in your patience, you possess ye your soul. You have to wait for patience in order to possess your soul. If you lose your soul, you lose out with God. Your patience will possess your soul. It would hold it there. It would keep it at the right time. And your patience will grow. My patience used to be very short. It's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. But a lot of time when I wait in patience, I go through. I go through. I go through. I'm, I'm telling you this because I don't want you to think just because you got patience, you're not going to go through. You're going to go through. The much patience Jesus had, he went through. And who didn't have more patience than Jesus? But God, Jesus had to go through it in all the patience he had. And I thank God.
for my patience. Because in Lamentation 3 and 25, it reads, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that speaketh, that seeketh him, knowing that he's going to give them patience. Hebrews 6 and 15 reads, And so after he had patiently waited the evidence, he obtained the promise. Abraham, as he patiently waited, he had to wait. He had to wait for him to get obtained. So when you're dealing with God, you got to wait. You're not going to rush God. Moses' son right said, you can't hear it, God? You might as well wait. Even if you're not with the Lord, there's some things in the world you're going to wait for. You got to wait. So might as well wait with God. At least you're in good company. You got to wait. So don't think. So them ingredients I was dealing with, and the Lord been dealing with me in the last six months just with faith. Just with faith. I have six or seven sermons that I just wrote out and just writing word dealing with faith. And every time I look around, it's going a different way. What are you trying to say, Lord? And this last one I wrote out the other morning, and the Lord said, you got to have this in order to have faith in me. You got to have strength. You got to obey me. You got to trust. And you got to have patience. Without these ingredients, you don't have faith. And these just are the main ingredients. It's just like the cake, flour, egg, sugar, milk. Them from the main ingredients. But there's other stuff in there to make a cake. It's called what kind of cake you're making. You got to have these ingredients in your life, saints, to walk with God. And these just don't come overnight. These just not given to you. Just like they say, the, the fruits of the Spirit, of this God give you that. Then he goes in Peter and he say, add to yours. If God is telling you to add, that means something you got to do on your own. God is not giving you everything. And I give you everything, what do you, you working? What do you, you seek in me? You already got everything. So this is faith. And it's better sense of the saints. This is what we need, saints, in order to walk with God. We need the ingredients to make us better saints, make us prosperous, make us better witness. Because you can't be a witness to nobody if you don't have patience. You can't be a witness to nobody if you don't trust. How are you going to tell me God can do this and God can do that and I'm looking at your life as raggedy? First thing, you need to let God do something for you. I told a guy one time I was coming up and I just got in the church. I was walking up uh, 6th Street. I told a guy, man, I'm just got that zeal for him. I said, man, I'm praying for you, man. I said, standing out there, he looked like he needed some encouraging words. I said, man, encourage this man. I said, brother, I'm praying for you, man. He said, yeah, pray for me that God gave me some money so I can give me some more dope. <laughs> so <laughs> I, said, I looked down and said, I'm praying for you and kept on walking. That's what he told me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, but I'm young in the Lord and I had a lot of zeal. <laughs> but I'm still praying for him. And I just thank God for this time. And I ask you, saints, to pray for us as we get ready to take our journey back to Dallas. I got to go back through Columbus, Ohio. Continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for the work in Dallas, the Bible Way Apostolic Church. Continue to pray for the work here. Because everybody's saying now, Pastor, it's a great falling away from the church. It's, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Ain't no great falling away. It's gleaming season. This is what they call gleaming. The falling away, been fell away. This is gleaming. You barely see it just a little here, a little there, a little there. It's gleaming season. And that's what I believe. Now, somebody else might say different. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with them. That's what they believe. But I believe it's gleaming season. But continue to pray for the church as a whole. Pray for the body of Christ. And as we pray for you, continue to pray for us.
thank you for your time. Amen. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no other name I know. Oh, there's power in the name Jesus. Power in the name of there's power in the name of there's no other name i know praise the lord everybody we certainly do thank god for this word that we have heard on today amen the ingredients of faith. the ingredients of faith he made it so plain that a fool can't err amen you need those ingredients of faith to walk with god amen so let the church stand uh, I hate the fact that we don't go through the normal process of our, our altar calls, but we know that if there's anyone that wants prayer, anyone that wants to be saved, thank you, Lord. You can just let me know. I'll baptize you in Jesus' name and pray that the Lord will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. That takes faith. Amen. Uh, to believe that through his name you can have salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for this great man of God and the word that God had given unto him. Amen. I'm going I'm I'm to have faith in God. <laughs> I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. With uplifted hands, uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you increase our faith, increase our walk with you. We trust you, Lord. We're going to be obedient to you. We're going to follow after you in the name of Jesus. One Lord. One faith, one baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Love on somebody. Amen.